Uh, so today in class, we learned that a function, uh, what a function is. A function exa it assigns exactly one output for every input. Now, like the name says, an input is the value that is put into a function, and the result is called the output. Now, up until this point, our inputs have been the x values, and our output has been, have been the y values. So uh, we're going to take a look at three ways to represent a function. Uh, the first way is called the mapping diagram. Um, we're going to take a look at, though, that's new. Um, we've never done that before. The next way is using a table of values. We've worked with table of values, you know, x, y, um, the, and, you know, we've been doing that for a while, and graphing table of values, coming up with the slope. And the next way we're going to represent a function is through a graph. So let's take a look at the mapping diagrams. So here we have a mapping diagram. A mapping diagram is used to represent relationships between the inputs and the output values. Now how do we know if this, which mapping diagram represents an, uh, a function? Well, we got to take a look at each input value and make sure that it is only paired with one output. And if that is the case, it is a function. So let's, look at, look, let's take a look at example A. If you look at example A, we have the 4, and the 4 is paired with the 4, but it's also paired with the 10. So, again, if each input value is paired with only one output, it is a function. But here, because the 4 is paired more than one output, this is not a function. So this is not a function. So let's take a look at the second one. Here we got the negative 1, it is paired with 0. It's only paired with one output. 11 is paired with negative 2, only one output. Negative 5 is paired with 7, and 9 is paired with negative 3. So in the example B, every input is only paired with one output. So the one that is a function is B. So this right here is a function. Let's take a look at another example. Which of these mapping diagram represents a function? Well, remember, in a mapping diagram, each input must only be paired with one output in order to be a function. So, example A, well, the 1 is paired with 9. 3 is only paired with negative 3. 4 is paired with 4. Now, 6 is also paired with negative 3. But remember, each input must only be paired with one output. So even though it is paired with negative 3, it's still only paired with one output. So that looks like a function, and it is a function. But let's take a look at the next example, part B. Well, the input 10 is paired with positive 3, only one output. Negative 5 is paired with positive 3, only one output. But here you can see that 7 is paired with negative 2, and 7 is paired with 1. Because it's paired with more than one output, it is not a function. So the function is going to be A. That's your function right there. Let's take a look at another example. Again, which one of these mapping diagrams represents a function? Remember, in a mapping diagram, each input value must only be paired with one output to be a function. So. The 2 is paired with 1, only one output. The input 1 is paired with one output 2. The input 3 is only paired with one output negative 2. And negative 7 is paired with 4. So that looks like a function, but let's take a look at the next, at number B. Here we got the input 1, but it is paired with two outputs. Because of that, B is not a function. So the one that represents, the mapping diagram that represents a function is mapping diagram A, and that's a function, okay? I'm going to go ahead and let, give you guys a couple seconds to take a look at this example and see if you can come up with the function. Now remember, each input value must only be paired with one output. Okay, well, take a look at A. 
is A paired with only one output? Well, I'm going to go ahead and use the highlighter and show you guys that negative one input is paired with the two output, three is paired with three, two is paired with seven, and that two is paired with zero. Now, we have two twos. Hmm. So is it paired with one unique output? Well, they try to trick you guys here. If you look at the twos, they listed it twice. So the positive two is actually paired with two. It's paired with negatives. Oops. It's paired with seven, and it's paired with zero. So A is not a function. It is not a function. So let's take a look at example B. We got negative 1 is paired with 0. Positive 1 is paired with 0. 0 is paired with 0. And 2 is paired with the output 2. So since each input is paired with only one output, B is your function. And sometimes they'll try to trick you just like they try to trick you there. All right, let's take a look at another example. But this example is going to be a table. Now, when looking at a table, again, you want to make sure that each input is only paired with one output. So, the 3 is paired with 0. 4 is paired with 7. 5 is paired with 10. But here we have another 4. And that 4 is paired with 14. So, we have two 4s, and they're paired with two outputs. Now, because of that, this is not a function because each input is not paired with only one output. So it's very similar to the mapping diagram. As a matter of fact, some people like to redraw tables as mapping diagrams. So let's take a look at another table. Again, we want to make sure each input is only paired with one output. So here, negative 1 is paired with 5. 0 is paired with 3. Positive 1 is paired with 4. 2 is paired with 7, and 3 is paired with 4. And each input is only listed one time, so because each input is paired with only one output, this is a function. And this table represents a function. So, so far we've taken a look at a mapping diagram and a table of values. Now let's take a look at a graph. Now, a graph in order to tell if a graph is a function, it's got to pass something called the vertical line test. And the vertical line is a line that is runs up and down parallel. Uh, up and down like a vertical leap is how high you jump. And so let's take a look at these examples. So in order to pass a vertical line test, any graph must only pass through that vertical line that you draw one time. So if you take a look at number one, the red in the, is the vertical line. And on the graph, which is a curve, let me change colors, you can see that it only touches. Oops, I'm having issues here. It only touches the, uh, the graph at one point. And in this case, it'll be right there. So because that graph only touches that vertical line one time, it is considered a function. Let's take a look at number two. We got our red vertical line, and it intersects that graph. It touches that graph just in one spot. Let me change colors here because it's hard to see. Okay. So it touches the graph and that green blotch right there. And so because it only the vertical line only touches the graph at one spot, it passes the vertical line test, so it is a function. Now, number three, you can't really see, but there is a line. You'll see the arrows. And really, that vertical line touches that graph everywhere. So there's, it touches it everywhere, all those points. And because it touches that vertical line on more than one point, it is not a function. So it fails the vertical line test. Number four, number four, we got a squiggly graph. And our vertical line intersects the, uh, the, the graph in one spot, that little green blotch, at only one place. So because of that, 
it passes the vertical line test, and so it is a function. Number five is a circle. The red vertical line, as you can see, it crosses, it touches the circular graph in two spots. And because it touches it at two spots, it fails the vertical line test. So it is not a function. And last but not least, we got number six. It's a graph, kind of looks like a half circle, uh, kind of like a happy face. And our vertical line, again, once again, it's the red line. It, and you can draw your vertical line anywhere you want. We have the vertical line, and it touches the graph at one spot, and it passes the vertical line test, so it is a function. And so that's how we identify functions based on the graph, if it passes the vertical line test. Now, you can put a vertical line anywhere you want. But if anywhere, if you see that it passes at one point, I'm sorry, at more than one point, it touches the graph, then it is not a function. All right, so this is a wrap-up of our summary. Um, any questions, come see me. I hope this helped you guys. Have a good day.